couple of glasses for us today we are ready to show off we got a fantastic show planned for you today ladies and gentlemen i will tell you about that in a moment but first here is a money-making bar trick for you i'll show you at the end of the show exactly what it is two rock glasses two any kind of glasses two kind of any kind of things all right so i've got some fancy glasses here now the idea is to take a coin all right and this is one of those bartender coins friend of mine from Australia actually gave me this one. Uh, it's a Ferne Branca and Strava coin. The question is, can you balance this coin on this dollar? It's a $20 bill, but it could be a five or a, or a single. I want you to figure out how to balance the coin on top of the bill between two glasses. That's the challenge I leave you with today. We are going to be right back. I will show you at the end of the, uh, the episode how to do this trick and how to make some money with it. But first, 
Let's get on with Behind the Glass with Dean Cernielis. We have a fabulous show planned for you. Thank you very much for everyone that's been sticking with us and following us through our journey of figuring out how to go live on Facebook and YouTube. This cocktail, I am going to show you how to make in a moment. Our show today has this great holiday cocktail. I'm going to teach you how to do that bar trick. We've got a great a uh, joke coming up. Where'd my cinema? Oh, there they are. Ha <laughs> ha. Looking for my candy canes to put on top of my cocktail. This is a great hot chocolate coffee cocktail that I'm going to show you how to make. We also have a very special guest. I just spent a few minutes chatting with him. He will be actually a featured guest on uh, uh, One Drink With. It's a new ser it's a new series that we're putting out on, on YouTube. It should be running later this week. One drink with Dwayne Sawyer. I'm hoping to put that out on Wednesday night. So make sure you uh, you tune in to uh, to Dean Sterneels on YouTube. That will only be running on YouTube. Dean Sterneels on YouTube. One drink with Dwayne Sawyer today. Dwayne will be joining us as our feature trainer here on Behind the Glass. He's going to show us how to do something. He says it's something that I've never seen. So. I'm excited myself to see what's going to happen. All right, I've got Allison behind the uh, the desk working and uh, producing the show for us. Thank you, Allison. And uh, I'm going to enjoy this drink, and I'm going to show you how to make it right after a little trivia. This great restaurateur was Dale DeGroff's mentor. Was it Kent Taylor, Joe Baum, Helen Davis, or Pat O'Brien. All right, I've been setting up my bar. Great trivia question. We're going to show you the answer to that trivia question in a moment. And why Dale DeGroff? Today on uh, DNA Trivia, Dean and Allison Bar Trivia at 10 o'clock tonight. Every Sunday night at 10 o'clock, we do our uh, Bar Trivia. All of the questions for our bar trivia come from Dale DeGroff's uh, Craft of the Cocktail. Here it is here, Dale DeGroff's Craft of the Cocktail. Uh, whoop. <laughs> One of the uh, cutting edge cocktail books. Uh, this came out right at the beginning of the renaissance of the, uh, of the cocktail. And uh, we, we credit Dale with, uh, with so much of what he's brought to the industry, showing us how to make great cocktails. All right. So we're celebrating Dale uh, and Dale DeGroff's work in craft of the cocktail. Anyway, let me get on to this cocktail because you can see all those questions of DNA trivia. This cocktail is a great in uh, original cocktail. We call it the uh, uh, chocolate mana. Chocolate mana. What I'm going to do is start off with a glass rimmed with candy canes. All right. How do you rim a glass with candy canes? Well, I take a candy cane and I put it in a little Ziploc bag. There we go. Well, easy for me to say. Now what I'll often do is wrap it in a towel, but another great use for a, uh, uh, an ice mallet. Just mash up those candy canes, all right? Make them into a great rimmer. So now I've got this beautiful rim on my coffee cup and let me show you what's in this. I could build it in the cup, but I want to show you what's in the cocktail here today. All right. Coco Real, real cream of coconut. The milk and the oils of the coconut. I want two ounces of that, okay? Now a little dash of cayenne pepper. All right, actually I don't need a spoon for that. I'm just making one cocktail. I have a cocktail here, but Allison needs a cocktail. So a few dashes of cayenne pepper, a couple of dashes of chocolate bitters. You know how I love my chocolate bitters. And 
some mocha. Here's some hot chocolate powder. All right, you can find your favorite. I find it. I try to find the best ones I can. Here's a great big tablespoon or a bar spoon of this chocolate powder. Excellent. Some hot chocolate mix. All right, let's go into a little bit of oh, Terramana tequila. Doing a great job. Terramana Reposado, because the Reposado is bringing uh, vanilla and citrus flavors into the cocktail. And some Liquor 43, or your favorite vanilla liqueur. <laughs> Dropping it in there. I'm going to stir this around. I want to try to dissolve the sugars that are in the, uh, the hot chocolate. All right, let's make sure I've got everything. I'll eliminate them as I go so I can keep track. Very good. Now, all of this gets poured right in to my coffee mug. And some espresso coffee. So I took the espresso, uh, espresso bean coffee grounds, ground them all up in my press. I let them steep for a little while. I like to let them steep so they're nice and strong. One of the ideas of this cocktail is to make sure that the coffee is really, really strong. All right. And we'll just pour that over top. Allison actually came to me this week and she said, can you make a hot chocolate on this week's show? I just want a hot chocolate because because our studio here is a little chilly. She wanted a hot chocolate. So now it's a hot chocolate with some coffee and some homemade whipped cream. So let's stir this up. I want to make sure that all those sugars break down and everything dissolves into the into the cocktail or into the hot liquid. Now inside this whipping cream and some master of mixes mint syrup. It's a beautiful mint syrup. It tastes like spearmint. Uh, it doesn't taste like uh, toothpaste or anything like that. It's a beautiful mint syrup if you can find it in the grocery store. In my uh, charger, which is a whipped cream charger. And here we go. So now it's a mint whipped cream. She likes the whipped cream. There we go. Whoop. <laughs> Beautiful. Little candy cane right in there. And this is Mexican chocolate. It's a piece of dark chocolate. It's the uh, Mexican uh, or Mexicano uh, chocolate. And I'll just grate that right on top. Beautiful. Because this makes all my drinks just a little greater. <laughs> Beautiful. Get this all out of the way. And there is a beautiful hot chocolate. Look at that deliciousness. Let's go for the close up here. Ooh, there it is. There it is. There it is, right there. All right. So there's the cocktail recipe. It's Terramana Reposado Tequila, Liquor 43, Coco Real, chocolate bitters, hot chocolate mix, and the cayenne pepper with espresso coffee. Um, the, the, wind, or the mint whipped cream as well on top. All right. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the, cayenne pepper in this that really makes this sing because it's spicy and that spiciness just goes so great with the hot chocolate uh, i'm actually going to walk this over to allison all right so she can enjoy this hot chocolate let's uh let's go to the uh, the rest of the trivia while i drop this off dale de Graff's mentor was the great restaurateur joe bomb Our guest this week is a, uh, you know, he's a guy I met a, a number of years ago hanging out in, in Vegas. I went down to, uh, I was a guest bartender trainer for uh, Slick Bartender, now known as Slick Bartender. Back in the day, he was just Vladimir, uh, Vlad and Terry. Uh, we're hosting some bartender trainings down in Vegas. And this guy was hanging out down there. And, you know, we just hit it off. He was a really great, great guy. And we got chatting and uh, 
and we've stayed in touch over the years online, et cetera, et cetera. And for Behind the Glass, I wanted to reach out for him because I knew that he had a lot to offer uh, the viewers of Behind the Glass. So ladies and gentlemen, let's take a quick look here at, uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's have a bit of a joke and come back and I'll tell you who we've got as our special guest. And now, Bad Bar Jokes with Dean Cerny. A grasshopper walks into a bar, hops up onto the bar stool and orders a beer. The bartender brings him a tall, frothy mug and says, You know, we have a drink named after you here. You're kidding! The grasshopper says, You have a drink named Murray? This has been Bad Bar Jokes with Dean Cernia. Nah, here shows. we go. He's live. <laughs> He's been hanging out in the in the green room waiting to go live. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Dwayne Sawyer. I will put my hands together for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Put my own hands together. I'll put my own hands together for that. Very cool. <laughs> Good stuff. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Uh, you're, uh, I think you said you were in a bartending school today, right? Can you tell us about your bartending school opening up very soon? So it is, I will be one of the instructors at Georgia Tenders in Federal Hill, Baltimore, which is at 912 South Charles Street in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, the classes start June, January 4th, but the Open house December 12th on the Saturday from 1 to 5. All right. Georgie Tinder. All right. So we got to drive up. Uh, Allison, we're going to Washington, D.C. on December 12th. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was an empty promise, but I left it anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so here he is. Here's Dwayne Sawyer. Uh, we met in, uh, in Las Vegas, I don't know, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, and tell us tell us again why you were in Vegas and, and some of your uh, journey to Vegas. So while I was in Vegas at first was because I was pretty much in all of Flair Bars in me. And right. so I needed to learn that. So you I went to Las Vegas. You were walking Vegas by a carnival Academy. court one day and you just saw Flippy and the guys. For my birthday, I was uh, in Las Vegas and walked past Carnival and I saw Flippy. And I was like, that's amazing. I need that. All right. And so after that, I took my Las Vegas Play Academy classes and I got every single certification they could give. And I was there at least four times a year in Vegas. And then I moved it. <laughs> then you moved back here. You moved to uh, you moved to Washington, D.C., right? Yeah, I came back home, which is where I'm from. And they built a new MGM. So I came back because they were building it. Right. And the Las Vegas Flare Academy, just for anybody who's just tuning in, uh, I know he's been going crazy on uh, Instagram and TikTok. He has 3 million <laughs> followers on TikTok now. Slick Bartender, Slick bartender. Mm -hmm. is the Vlad that we're talking about. Uh, he's been so instrumental in growing Flare and growing the bartending community in Vegas and, and now in Florida. Um, so uh, shout outs to, uh, to Vlad Slick Bartender. Indeed. <laughs> hey, we've got some people uh, calling in here. There's uh, great stuff, Dean. There's from Saint Martin. Nice, very good. I got a chance to travel around quite a bit, and I meet many bartenders, and I just love seeing it, seeing them come, come in and saying hi here. You know, 
Uh, you know, <laughs> right, right. You never know the, the lives you get to touch along the way. I mean, you and I, how, we didn't spend that much time together in Vegas, right? Right. But still, you know the influence. And then I watched you, and even though we didn't spend that much time together, the conversations we had in those little times, and then what you did online, and invention of a flare bottle, because I know you did that, like, it's crazy. I did. I did invent that darn thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't have any uh, any idea whatsoever that it would go and, and create such an impact around the world. Um, that bottle was destined to to bring bartenders together. So, and they're still buying them today. Nice. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, Dwayne. You are here today because I know that you have some extra special skills from your career in the industry, and you're teasing me because <laughs> you say you've got something to teach me that I've never seen before. Yeah, I think I, I think I think I got you on this. One. I do think I got you on it. All right, I feel like I'm so on that Penn and Teller school us or something. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you the setup. So you know how when people go out, they say they can make a drink. Right. Right. Have you so heard that people term? being like bartenders say they can make a drink? Anybody. They say they can make it rain. Like rain. Like oh, make it like rain. rain. I'm sorry. Yes, I've heard. Yes. Okay. I've seen somebody actually make it snow. I've never seen anyone make it snow. No. See, and that's what I mean. I'm going to show you how to make it snow. Behind the bar. Behind the bar. Right now. On your show. I love it. Let's do it. All right. So, you just have your, uh, yeah. you have your tent. You're playing around with your tent behind the bar. All right. So then you throw your, your, your magic one. And you, just, you give it about two ounces. Let it fizzle up. And then it <laughs> You might want to turn it around and talk it behind your head until you don't drop it. And then you just come out with all this. Voila. I have never seen you do that. Uh, what, what is the snow over there in Washington, D.C.? So it's not wet at all. Ah, that's how you make it. That's not like slush powder or anything, is it? Because slush powder would absorb. Not it. at all. It's actual snow. It would never be anything like slush powder. So is it like crushed ice? Like you could use it in a drink now, or? No, it's just no. It's, it cools your hand while you're sitting at the bar. That's it. That's all it does. That's pretty cool. So it's absolutely no purpose at all. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Are you going to teach that to us? Today? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to give away your secrets. I... It's magic. <laughs> it is magic, and I don't want you to save away your secrets. That's pretty cool, man. I like that a lot. And, uh, and it it certainly uh, made people kind of crazy on the other side of the bar, wouldn't it? Oh, it totally kills. Whenever you do it. Even if you do a couple of rotations, just add your magic in, nobody ever sees it coming, but you can only do it like twice. Gotcha. So cool. Um, you were doing some flair there and, uh, and mixology. What do you like best? Do you like doing flair more or mixology, like making cocktails more, or what's your balance in there? Um, so I like whatever the... Um, I learned this from Danilo, whatever the situation calls for at that time. So if you're in a place where it's time for entertainment, you do more flair. If it's more about a cocktail style, then you get creative with the cocktail. But knowing when to do both or either one is actually the skill. Can you give me some advice on, on so I'm a new bartender that has a little bit of flair skill, loves to make a great drink on the other side. What are the, some of the things that you look for in the situation that, that that I can look for to make that call? So 
uh, I don't know how this sounds, but Tinder dates are usually the ones that are less impressed by flair because they're trying to get to know each other. Couples that have already been together or friends that are just out drinking enjoy the flair more than the couples. <laughs> so you have to be able to read the crowd to, to figure out who's who. The first date people, they don't really care about the flair. They want to get a drink, look in each other's face, they googly eyes and learn what type of cat each other has or whatever the hell they talk about. The people that come in to drink and party and the couples that have already been around, they're into the fun. They came out because they can make drinks at home. That's really funny. That's really funny. Now that's all like outside of my time zone but so behind when I was actually working the bars. They didn't have Tinder when I was actually on the bar. Uh, however, I was doing close-up magic and I would go, perfect example, I would move from table to table doing magic tricks. And if I came to a table with the people that were on their first date and this guy comes up and starts doing magic tricks and starts doing these crazy things with his hands and stuff, the guy would always get upset with me <laughs> because he couldn't do magic. And the girl would be like, oh right. my God, your magic is so awesome. <laughs> right? But any couple that, that has been together and has some trust and, and understands each other, you know, then they both love the magic. So <laughs> it's a perfect example. It's because it's because they can sit it's because they can sit at home and make any drink they want. So you're not impressive because they came out to have fun. Right, right. They've come out to to get away from uh, being stuck at the house together. Uh, and then, like you said, that Tinder couple just wants to get to know each other. And, uh, and see where the night will go. <laughs> they, don't want to be they just want to get a drink on. <laughs> right. All right, enough of that. I just need a cocktail, man. <laughs> so tell me about right. the steakhouse you work at. What's going on? Uh, you, you're, just, you're still working. Uh, you're not uh, down from, uh, from COVID. So uh, tell me about what I, what I expect at the steakhouse. All right, so at the steakhouse, it's a craft bar. So we do all craft cocktails. We have a small cocktail list, but everything else is craft. We don't really do a lot of flair. What I'll do is uh, I may do some napkin flair. I may do uh, 10 or two. Um, I may light a few things on fire. Um, but I don't really do a lot of uh, bottle tossing and tea tossing because they don't pay me enough to do it. <laughs> They don't pay you enough to do the flair? No. Even though Vitaggio Brothers, Vitaggio Brothers Steakhouse is great. I mean, on Food Network and everything like that, it's a great place to be. But MGM, as opposed to the one in Vegas, the one in D.C., doesn't actually promote flair. Right. Don't you make so extra... You not to... doesn't, doesn't flair just help you build your own clientele? And, and don't you make more tips just because of flair? Because of the stuff that I do, yes, but the other bartenders don't flare. So I do minimal basic flare just so we can all get tips, but they don't flare at all. Right. And I don't want them trying at work. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've worked on many a bar like that where I'm the only guy flipping a bottle around. Um, so uh, you've been on uh, TV a couple of times. Uh, and you have this yeah, great yeah, milk yeah. commercial. <laughs> what are some of your favorite points of uh, being on TV? Um, I feel like I suck behind the camera without a great director, but the exposure is you can't you can't even match the exposure that you get from somebody actually seeing you on a TV screen, right? And then seeing you in real life at a bar or something like, wait a minute, you're the guy I saw this morning on TV. And I was like, yeah, I was on TV this morning. And then now they're like, oh, shit, you make us some, some, some. They don't even care what you want. They don't even care what, what you make after that. They saw you on TV in the morning. You your bar at night. It's great. That's great. Can you, uh, can you teach us uh, some flair? Uh, you were talking earlier. We had a conversation about teaching working flair or, or just pours and cuts or something. What are you going to be teaching at the school? Can you share one trick with the audience before I let you go today? Yeah, so we'll start with a basic stall. 
So the basic Star Wars thing is just put it on your hand here. Okay. You can upgrade the skull with a simple toss. So this is another simple, basic toss you can do behind the back, catch, flip, and sit it on your hand. Oh, you just place it on your hand. You don't throw it up and, and catch it. Right. Not at first. But then you can do stuff like a double ten. Two rotations. That. Nice, nice. Well done. Whatever you teach, but you also have to teach them how to drop, how to drop, and how to not affect them when they drop. All right. Well, you went on. You just moved right along after that drop, and I was going to do. I was not going to acknowledge it myself. <laughs> I was just gonna. Let but you know. have to teach them how to not get affected when they do drop and keep moving through the uh, through the routine. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. You can't get freaked out when you drop. Right. The amount of bartending competitions I've been to where the guys are dropping and their whole show is them chasing bottles around on stage, and it's just it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, you can't do it. You got to have a backup plan. You got to have something else up your sleeve. Um, so so cool. Um, weird. At, yeah. So we got, uh, some flared, the, the bottle stall or the, bo the shaker tin stall is a good place to start. You say, and yeah. just by placing it's a it on there, move and it looks good. right, right. Good stuff. And, uh, so December 12th, you've got an open house at the, uh, at the school. In yeah. Washington. December 12th is an open house at Georgie, Georgie tenders in Baltimore, Maryland. Georgie tenders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 912 South Charles Street. Nice. All right. I think we've got uh, I think we've got the information here on the screen. All right. Yeah, I see it right there. Yeah, yeah. Ah, there it is. <laughs> uh, there's Dwayne. All right. <laughs> yeah, just move your body to the side just a bit, tad bit. There it is. <laughs> right All right. Here. Beyond the cocktail. We're gonna find you on Instagram at Beyond the Cocktail, Facebook. And uh, Georgie Tenders, the Bartending Academy, right? Yep. Good stuff. Hey, man, you've uh, you've shared something with me today that I've never seen before. You made it snow behind the bar. <laughs> I had to pull out something big for you. <laughs> well, I greatly appreciate that, man. Uh, I'm going to be scratching my head because I saw you pour that liquid in the shaker tin and you did not swap it out. Um, nope. So, because I knew you'd be looking. Yeah, I'm gonna call Penn and Teller and say, <laughs> "Hey guys, you gotta help me out here." <laughs> cool, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us on Behind the Glass. I'll be running your uh, one drink with Dwayne Sawyer this Wednesday on uh, on YouTube. So please uh, please join us there, uh, Dwayne. Okay. Any uh, any last thoughts to to bartenders that are just walking into the industry? You know what? Never limit yourself. And what you can do, and never stop learning. You can learn. You can always learn more, and you can always do more. Just don't ever limit yourself. Fantastic, fantastic! And you are a perfect example. A guy who just started in a cocktail bar making drinks, decided to learn flair. You've been all over Vegas, and 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 now you're on TV because you have expanded your knowledge to all aspects of the craft. I appreciate you so much, sir. So much, and I'm not so, done either. I'm far from done. I'm far from done. Yeah, you know, people have said to me that uh, they're master bartenders, and I'm like, do you know any flair? No, I don't know any flair. Then you can't be a master at it. You know, you not have all. to be a master at all aspects of the craft if you're going to be the master bartender. So, uh, exactly. yeah, keep learning and keep sharing. So, thank you very much. This is my yard day here. Uh, I'm sharing everything that I know about bartending with anybody that'll watch and listen. Uh, and all the cool guys that I know. So, cool. All right. Thanks, Dwayne. I greatly appreciate you. Hey, thanks, Dwayne. Come back in at, uh, at 10 o'clock. We're doing trivia. All right? Okay, I got you. Very cool. All right. We're going to uh, show people how to, uh, how to do a bar trick right after this. Thanks, man. All right. Good stuff. Hey, put your hands together for uh, Dwayne. Thanks, Dwayne. That was pretty awesome. Now... 
the bar trick. We present a, uh, yeah, not slush powder. I just saw that coming in. It was not slush powder, and I thought it was. I totally thought it was slush powder, Rob. But it wasn't. Uh, Rob at Bar Wars LLC. Check him out. He's down in Florida. He's actually going to be on the show next week. Rob is our go guest next week. Uh, we're going to talk prohibition cocktails because next week is uh, right on the weekend of prohibition. All right. December 5th, 1933. All right. So you've got a bill. Whether it's a $5, a $1, a $20, or whatever it is, the higher the denomination, the better because you want your guests to say, great trick and push it across the bar to you. So the question is, how do you take a bill and support a coin on the bill? You leave the you leave the question with the guests, they play with it, they try to figure it out. And here's the answer. I fold the bill once, just a tiny little bit, making a nice crease, and then you flip it over and fold it again. And then flip it over and fold it again. Let's go to the, uh, the, there it is, all right. So I'll move back here so you can see that I fold it and then flip it over, fold it again, flip it over and fold it again. We're good, there we go. All right, back to the wide shot. You'll see that I have an accordion. I've made an accordion here of the bill there it is between my two glasses, whether the rock glasses, wine glasses, or little silver goblets. And you take your coin, all right? That's the French drop. We'll show you that again later. And I can now place that coin right on top. And that's the simple bar trick. Huh. Makes a little bit of money. I don't know if I could turn it sideways, maybe you can see it better. Uh, either way, it's a great shot. All right, so that's the simple bar trick. Support the coin on a bill between two glasses. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us again. Next week, we have Rob Husted from, uh, from Bar Wars LLC. He's been in the business as long as I have. In fact, we were both uh, pretty rookie bartenders when we met down in uh, Florida or Vegas or wherever it was. It was Florida when we met. Uh, looking forward to having him next week. Please put your hands together for Allison, our producer, Allison, doing a great job here today. Hi, Allison. All right, and uh, we'll be back next week. Don't forget to join us at 10 o'clock tonight on Dean Cernil's Insta um, Facebook and YouTube for uh, DNA Trivia. All of the questions on DNA Trivia are based on Dale DeGroff's book, The Craft of the Cocktail. All right, yes, you can do this with a Canadian bill, Diana. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you, Dwayne Sawyer, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.